Search engine optimization, SEO, is simply creating or adjusting your website so that a search engine like Google can find it easily and understand its content accurately. Let's take a step back to understand how Google search works. Google and other search engines compiles information about the trillions of web pages available to the public. It does this with software called a bot, a crawler, or spider. For Google, this is often called Googlebot. Googlebot crawls the web looking for pages of new and updated content. All of that information is then stored in an index. You can think of an index as a gigantic filing cabinet organizing and categorizing all the content Googlebot can find. When you type in a search called a search query, Google goes to that index to find the right matches. Google sorts through all the possible page matches, ranks them for relevance to the search query, and presents a web pages full of results. When people say, I want to be first on Google, they typically mean they want their website to rank first, to be listed at the top of the search results page when a searcher types in a word or a phrase. That brings us to Google's search engine results page or SERP, the place where you want your website to show up. This slide illustrates a typical search results page on a desktop computer. The section highlighted in the center of the page shows where Google's search results can appear, where SEO can make a difference. These results include the information that Googlebot can find and index. They are not ads and you cannot pay to show up or show up in a prominent position. These results are determined only by their relevance to the search query. SEO is a long game. It can take time to see the impact of SEO improvements. If you think of it in terms of growing your business, you might compare SEO to getting good word of mouth versus running a radio or television ad. Advertising can get your message out quickly and be a worthwhile investment, but you still want to have reach and credibility that comes with building a good reputation. When you set up your website, you probably put a good deal of thought into the content you wanted customers to see, from product descriptions, to company philosophy, to answering frequently asked questions. Content SEO is simply looking for ways to ensure that Google understands the content you publish so that it can deliver relevant search results. This is where keywords become important for SEO. Again, keywords are the phrases or words that people type in when they search. The technical term for the search keyword is a search query. If a searcher's query includes keywords that are prominent in your website content, you have a better chance of appearing in search results. Your first step is to cast a critical eye on the current content on your site. You may find the copy straightforward, but remember, you may be more knowledgeable about this topic than some of your searchers. You probably know more about the business and the brand, so it's possible that the phrases and words you use to write the website may not match with the searcher's query. Try to think like your customer you want to reach, a person who may be unfamiliar with your products, services, or brand. What are they searching for? Is it as broad as cashmere sweater or more detailed like women's kimono cashmere sweater? Are they looking for eco-friendly fashion, cashmere wraps, plus size? Assess each page of your website. If someone is searching for kimono style sweaters, you may want to help Google find and surface the page for the Chelsea kimono sweater. Keep in mind, the more generic a keyword is, the more difficult it will be for your web page to appear in high positions in search results. There are many keyword research tools available. In this workshop, we'll show you Google Keyword Planner. This is a tool within Google Ads. It does require that you create a Google Ads account. Google Ads will ask you to enter a credit card when you set up the account, but there is no fee to open the account and you do not need to advertise. You can simply set up the account and use it to access the Google Keyword Planner tool. Keyword Planner can suggest keywords related to your business, plus show you how often these keywords show up in Google search results. You can use this tool to research keywords. Ideally, you want to identify keywords with relatively high search volume that are specific to your web pages, but don't automatically dismiss ideas that don't rate at the top. Mercy might use Google Keyword Planner to find keywords related to kimono. Using the tool, they could see keyword ideas like boho kimono, kimono duster, and modern kimono. Reminder, these are just ideas. Not every suggestion will apply to your web page. Here's another tool, Google Trends. 
Trends can help you research keyword themes and compare the relative popularity of different searches on Google over time. The data is presented in a graph on a scale from 0 to 100, with 100 representing peak search volume. If it has enough data, trends can show related popular searches and rising searches, searches experiencing significant growth. You can use it to compare the popularity of different words and phrases, to find patterns of seasonality, and to see where searches happen geographically. For example, a business called Tea Drops use Google Trends to research how people in the U.S. search for bubble tea. Using Google Trends, they learned that on the West Coast, more people search for the word boba more frequently than on the East Coast. On the East Coast, more people search for the term bubble tea. That information can really be useful as you publish content on your site. After making your list of keywords, think about how to apply each page of your site and how to map them. Mercy's products are promoted as being great for travelers, so the keyword travel sweater might be a good fit to map to Mercy's sweater and tees product page. A more specific keyword like kimono travel sweater might be a good keyword to map to Chelsea kimono product page. Try to identify and map three unique keywords for each page and prioritize them. Which is the primary term that you believe will bring customers to your webpage? Second, third? If you identify an important keyword related to your business, but your site doesn't have a web page that maps to it, make it a new web page. It could be a blog post or an about page. But if it's a priority keyword, it needs a solid place to exist on your website. Your website has a number of different spots where incorporating keywords can help with your SEO efforts. First, we'll look at page titles. As you click through the pages of a website, you'll see the page title in the tab at the top of the web browser window. It's above the actual web page, part of the frame around the page. Page titles may show up in the words that link to the page in Google search results, as shown in the example on the slide, Chelsea Kimono Mercy. Every web page should have a unique title, reflecting what visitors will find when they get there. Keep titles short and to the point. This is not the page to use flowery language or hilarious pun. You're looking to inform, not entertain. Your content management system, WordPress or Shopify, are some great examples. It may automatically generate page titles when web pages are created, but most content management systems allow you to edit them. One SEO myth is that repeating keywords in your copy can help with SEO. That's called keyword stuffing, and it leads to a sentence like, our travel sweaters are the travel sweaters that people who love travel sweaters turn to when they need a travel sweater. Don't do that. It won't help, and it's more likely to hurt. However, you do want to include your keywords in your content, write naturally, for human visitors. Visitors often skim the content to find what they're looking for, so make your content easy to digest, with useful information in various formats. Make sure the on-page title fits the theme of the web page, and better yet, includes an important keyword. This example from Mercy is titled Chelsea Kimono. It vividly describes the sweater, how it feels, how it looks, how it can be worn. It includes photos from various angles that can be enlarged. The web page includes customer reviews, a star rating, and related products too. And the final step, implementation. After reviewing your content, researching and choosing keywords, revising body copy, page titles, and meta descriptions, send your work live. If you use a content management system, you may be able to do this yourself. Otherwise, your web development team can help you. But remember, Especially when it comes to SEO, a website should not remain static. And you'll want to review and create new content on a regular basis. Technical SEO refers to the ways you can adjust your website code and configuration to help Google find, understand, display, and improve your web pages. Even if you don't deal with the technical side of your site, having a deeper understanding of how technical SEO works can lead to more productive discussions with your web development team and potentially better ranking in the search results. At the start of this workshop, I talked about how Googlebot crawls, indexes, and ranks your website content. Technical SEO is a way to help Google in those efforts by improving efficiency, quality, and speed. It's a bit like upgrading to a new computer. You get a better, faster response to your commands. Here's how technical SEO helps. It makes it easier for Google to find your content when it crawls the web. It allows Google to interpret the content of your web pages better. 
It ensures that your pages are getting in front of the people who are searching for your content, and it improves the user experience for your website visitors. Googlebot finds new pages on a website the same way most people do. It follows the links from one page to the next. You can think of it like Hansel in the fairy tale, leaving a trail of white pebbles. This trail of links, not pebbles, helps Google find more web pages. So it's a good idea to include those internal links where you can, wherever it makes sense on your website. The Mercy page shown here features new winter arrivals with links to product pages for each individual sweater. Here we pulled out and highlighted the link labeled Shop the Catalina Sweater. This internal link could assist Google finding and indexing the web page. Once you've created and added a sitemap to your website, the next step is for Googlebot to find that sitemap and use it when next crawling your web pages. There's a tool that can help you kickstart the process, Google Search Console. Search Console, once known as Webmaster Tools, is a tool that includes a number of features that help with SEO, including the ability to submit a sitemap so that Google knows it's there and ready. You can create a free Search Console account at g.co slash search console. Important note, you don't have to sign up for Search Console to be in included in Google search results, and having this tool will not improve the likelihood of your pages ranking higher in search. You know how your trusted yellow highlighter lets you get straight to the important points in a dense paper? Structured data works the same way for website code, helping Google understand content efficiently. Adding structured data can help your site stand out in search results by helping Google highlight important content. When you search last, you may have noticed pieces of information that were pulled out or layered on top of typical information in the results, the title, link, and description. These extra details are called rich results, or also called rich snippets. Rich results are basically enhanced versions of standard text search results. You can see details like an image, a price, average customer rating, and more. For example, the structured data picture on this slide highlights the product's price and whether or not it is in stock. This is the HTML code that Google will see. The next slide shows what a human could see. And here's an example of how that structured data could look in the search results. This extra info helps searchers get more valuable information at a glance so they can make a more informed decision about which results to click on. Bottom line, incorporating structured data can improve SEO by helping your website stand out on a search results page and encouraging more click through. Remember how we constructed simple and straightforward page titles in the content SEO section? That same philosophy applies to URL structure for technical SEO. The URL structure shows Google how a user can navigate your site. Let's say they start with Mercy's homepage, www.mercy.com. From there, they may scroll down the page and click on the Chelsea kimono. The URL is www.mercy.com slash products slash the dash Chelsea dash kimono. The name of the page helps Google understand its content and how it fits into the website as a whole. Most content management systems offer an option to edit web page URLs. Here's a few best practices to help you optimize your URL structure. Follow, follow the site's folder structure, which serves as a navigation map. Separate words, separate words with hyphens rather than running them together as one word. That can avoid confusion. For instance, the Chelsea kimono as one word is not as clear as the dash Chelsea dash kimono. Place short words like an, the, or a with hyphens. Use lowercase letters and avoid special characters. Clearly describe what the web page contains. Helping Google better understand your site in this way can help improve its ranking in the search results. You probably had the experience of clicking on a page that interests you only to abandon it because it loads too slowly. Images are often the culprit here. Here are some tips that can speed up the time it takes to load images on your page. First, compress images. That means you're reducing the file size, the amount of space it takes to store an image. Second, use lazy loading. That means delaying loading the image until it is needed. For example, if a user won't see an image until they scroll down a page, the image won't load until the user scrolls down to that spot. Third, properly sizing your image. That is the actual dimensions of the image. If you use HTML to make a gigantic image file appear smaller to fit the page, it would take the web page longer to load because it's still a large file squeezed into a small spot. 
and finally caching. This is a, a way to store images as they are retrieved quickly when your web pages load. Speeding up the load time of your site improves the user experience, which can lead to more visits and longer visits. Thanks again for joining Grow with Google today. See you next time.